Yes, it's Monday, and we all know what that means by now. Welcome back, everybody. Hooray! Let's pop some party poppers. I have none. Hooray! Let's pretend. Pop. Bang. Whistle. I don't know. Do they whistle? I don't know. Let's pretend I have confetti. Confetti! People are tuning in for the first time thinking, this is ghosts. No, not yet. Anyway, how have you all been? I hope you've all been fantastically well. We've got our usual shindig for you today. Um, We're going to, of course... Well, we're not going to thank our Patreons. We are going to thank our Patreons. What was... Just contradict yourself, Johnny. Um, What I mean is, a big thank you to all of our Patreons, but I have no guitar, so there'll be no song, is what I mean. So we're jumping right back into it with no song. So a big thank you to all of our Patreons. If you would like to join Patreon and support this fledgling little show, head over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. I always get confused because sometimes I shorten it to talk about ghosts on other things. But anyway, it's patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. And I don't know why I'm saying ghosts like that. But when you do, what you will get is two shows each and every week. Yes, one which is a ramble, which, as you can tell, I like to talk. And it's not about ghosts. And secondly, we have a paranormal podcast, which is about ghosts. Yes, recently, well, I say recently, yesterday, we done one about the ghost of Viva la France. Because I was thinking... You know, England and America don't have the, the um, what's the word? Can't think of the right word, but the monopoly. We don't have the monopoly on the paranormal. You know, there must be other paranormal events in other countries too. And we've kind of, yes, in recent years, we've segued into Latin America and we've stolen La Llorona and we've made her sort of westernised, if you like, in terms of movies anyway. But um, there must be, you know, like in the French language, there must be horrific stories, the same with Italy, the same with other places. So that's what we're going to look at over on Patreon. So if you'd like to do... Oh, and also I sing your name normally as a thank you with a guitar. Yes, I do. So go to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. Anyway, what have we got in store for you today? Well, we're going to have something very strange. It's not strange, really. We're going to, we normally do a paranormal review where I review the paranormal, so you don't have to. But we're going to do um, a precognitive review. What? Say what? Um, basically, tomorrow, so it's Monday now, tomorrow I'm going to watch the film... Every paranormal podcaster is talking about. I, of course, am talking about Late Night with the Devil, the Devil. And I'm going to pre review that, explain how that works. I don't know. I haven't done it yet. Then we're going to have one of your paranormal experiences. And then finally, Becca has returned from the Middle East and she is going to share with us a story from Reddit corner so yeah all good stuff but first and foremost let's have a what a pre-paranormal review what what are you even saying eustace (laughs) yes welcome to your paranormal review or in this case your um what you call it precognitive paranormal review bum 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 how can you review something you haven't even watched That's the challenge. Oh, before I go any further, actually, just to very quickly jump back to our Patreons. There have been some lovely comments left on Patreon recently. Really nice ones, and I'm very thankful. So you deserve, you deserve. How patronising is that? I'd like to thank you on the main show. So thank you very much for your kind comments. They are seen. I don't reply much because of current affairs. But thank you very much. And I think there was one person, maybe Ivana, who was up in Liverpool this week. If you're going to ever be up in Liverpool, do let me know as much in advance as you can. And hopefully, and this goes for anyone, not just Patreons, we can um, catch up and have a cup of tea or coffee. You can't have anything alcoholic, okay? But you can have tea or coffee. Anyway, moving on to my precognitive review of Late Night with the Devil. Now, I have no idea how I'm going to start this. Well, basically, I can tell you what I know about it. 
So from my understanding, right, there was a BBC, I've spoke about this many times in the past, an amazing BBC uh, docudrama called Ghost Watch. Way back in, was it the early 90s? It must have been. Late 80s, early 90s. Early 90s, it must be. Anyway, people believed it. It was like a war of the worlds of its time. Although it was like, you know, it started, when the program started, it was like, uh, now what's coming on is a drama. No one really saw that because they flicked over two minutes in. And what you've seen was real people um, playing themselves, like, you know, genuine, like, so for example, Sarah Green and I think it was Mike Walker, was it? I'm not sure. I think he used to manage Everton FC. But anyway, her husband, Mike, can't remember his surname. Um, Mike Green? Don't know. Anyway, they were playing themselves. So when you turned over, it was just them. It'd be like if, I'm trying to think of like a, um, a modern day equivalent. Oh, there's my phone going off, forgive me. I'm thinking of a modern day equivalent. So it'd be like if you turned on the TV and Oprah Winfrey was there saying, hi, I'm Oprah Winfrey. You wouldn't say, ah, she's acting. You'd say, okay, yeah, well, tell me more, Oprah, um, about... I was going to say some very conspiratorial things there, but I'm not going to. Anyway, the point being is that you didn't know. Now, my understanding is Late Night with the Devil is this sort of premise. It's like a, I believe it's meant to be like a found footage thing, something that was allegedly never aired because of what took place. So I believe the premise is that in the it's set in the 70s, and they decide to have a live studio studio audience have this person come on and they perform an exorcism or something. And so much goes on within it that they decided they could never air it. And this is the tape. And that's an amazing premise. It's really interesting to be able to find something new or a new way of approaching the found footage phenomena. Do you know what I mean? That that the blow it started it and ended it, really, in my opinion. Because everything after that was fail, like um, paled in comparison, even, and you know they put so much thought into the Blair Witch in terms of setting up websites with dodgy news reports of the murder and things like that, and then they released it. It was so, so well done. Um, so you can't really do found footage films anymore. It doesn't really work, especially nowadays, because they're normally very dodgy, very dodgy. Um, I say that as I'm writing a found footage film at the moment. But my point being is that to think of a new way of introducing a found footage film, i.e. It's, it's found footage, but it's found footage within the realms of like an archaic library within some studio's network, you know, a reel which was never played, which is a wonderful new way of looking at it. You know, as opposed to this tape was found in the woods. This tape was found on the camera of the last person who saw big feet. That was several Bigfoot. I'm sorry, that's a Parapod joke. Thanks, um, guys from the Parapod. Anyway, so, yeah, I'm interested in the fact that it's meant to be like that, according to what I've read about it. You know, I didn't want to read too much. I don't want to spoil it for myself. Um, me and my mate are going to watch it in the Liverpool Odeon. And when we were looking at tickets, um, one person's bought a ticket so far, and we were going to buy a seat next to him. But I don't mean like him, then us two. I mean either side. Uh, or her, or they, or them. But we were going to buy tickets either side of them. And uh, we thought that would be dead funny. But then we decided against it because it's just cruel. So we moved elsewhere. But it would have been dead funny. Um, especially when they realised we knew each other because we were going to turn up separately as well and then go like, oh, Steve, oh, John and they would have inevitably went, do you want me to move so you can sit next to each other? And we would have said no. That was the, you know, no, no, you stay there. What's your name? So anyway, that would have made me laugh. So I'm looking forward to it and the host of this um, show, the Late Night with the Devil show, He's amazing. I don't know what I've seen him in. He's one of these actors where when you see him, you're, like, you're going to be like, I've seen him in so many things. And it, it looks like he's well-deserved. You know who he reminds me of? Um, Damien Karras from The Exorcist. You know, the young priest. I often hark about a young priest and an old priest, obviously taking it from The Exorcist. 
But the young priest is Father Damien Karras. I don't know the actor's name. But he looks like him. Like if they were to remake The Exorcist. Not that they should, ever. But if they were to go, going to do so, he'd make an excellent Karras. Um, he looks like him. But anyway. So that's the premise. The premise is, as far as I'm aware, I maybe get this completely wrong. And it's going to be an interesting one because next week, we're going to, the review will be the film. So there you go. Um, but the premise of, you know, it's a 70s, it's a live studio audience. They bring someone in who's allegedly possessed and they carry out an exorcism is what I believe takes place. I may be completely wrong. You know, here's where we watch it tomorrow and it's like the A-team, and the, like machine guns and stuff. But I've seen that uh, on Facebook, um, a good few fellow podcasting friends of mine have watched it. Um, the ghost story guys, etc., and they say, like, wow, amazing. But I have seen other people saying, Well, that's an hour of an hour and blah blah of my life, I'll never get back. But I get the feeling those people are just not either A, not into the paranormal, B, I've got a funny feeling there's going to be quite a lot of things that having a, a quite high knowledge of the paranormal will make you go, uh, 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 uh. I mean, hopefully not out loud in, in the cinema. But do you know what I mean? It would be like, um, for example, they may produce Zena cards but not reference them. And to the person who doesn't know what a Zena card is, they're just like, the plane snap in the corner. You're like, they're not. They're doing ESP test, you tit. Um, that's how angry I'd get in the cinema. Anyway, so my review, my precognitive review for Late Night with the Devil is currently nothing because I haven't watched it. But I'm hoping it's two thumbs to the sky. Next week, we will find out. How exciting. To next week, everyone. Hooray. <laughs> now it's my favourite time of the week every week. Well, I know we've been off for a few weeks, but, you know, even so. So it's when we read your true paranormal experiences. And we've had an email in. I want to make sure I can read their name. Yes, I can. Selena, she writes, Hi, Kev. Hi. Becca. Hi. And TNT. Wow. From Ontario, Canada. Wow. Yes, you can use my name. I double-checked that before checking. Lol, which is Selena. When I was younger, we lived in Toronto, Ontario. The house we lived in was nice, but it had some character. My mum always had stuff happening to her, like being poked in the ribs. Sounds like tapping of fingers every time she went down to do the laundry. She was terrified of this house. But I'm going to stick with my personal experience in this email. So, where to begin? I was between five and seven years old when these things took place. My grandpa passed away suddenly in his apartment. My dad had grandpa's guitar on a stand in the corner of the dining room. My aunt was babysitting my brothers and I, and the guitar started strumming on its own. Twice. Two deliberate strums and then nothing. My aunt called my mum at work and told her she was taking us to her house and that my mum can pick us up when she was done. But that was a nice experience, in my opinion. The rest, not so much. In my bedroom, my closet and my parents' closet were connected by a four-foot-long hallway-type space. I used to wake up sitting in the middle between our rooms in the dark by myself. I'd never remember going in there. I never had an issue with sleepwalking either. So I would go back to bed and forget about it. It never really fazed me. I didn't tell my parents about it, but they must have heard or felt something because one day my dad got my aunt to bring her dog over to the house. He had her on a leash and walked her up the stairs. She was fine until she got to my bedroom door. She just wouldn't go near it. My dad tried to get her to go in and she dug her paws into the carpet to stop being forced into the room. My dad let go of the leash and she ran downstairs. About a week later, my dad bought a German Shepherd puppy, who was hyper, clueless to everything, so I don't think his plan, whatever it was, 
worked for him. Other things that happened were family and friends would come over on weekends and they would feel like someone was poking them in the ribs, waking them up of a night. My mum once saw two small kids standing at the end of her bed. Stove burners would turn off in the middle of my mum cooking. A couple of years later, I'm now nine, we moved from the city to the country. The move wasn't due to all the paranormal stuff. My dad didn't feel safe with my eldest brother starting high school having to go through a metal detector just to go into school, so he wanted us out of the city. This being said, when my mum was packing stuff, she found bloody socks in the closet in between our bedrooms where I used to wake up. No idea what that was about, as I never had any cut or anything on me. This freaked my mum out. So the house we moved into was built in the 1800s. The foundation was massive boulders. It was an all-brick, six-bedroom house. Very old and very creepy. It was on 78 acres of native land, as we lived on a native reserve in Alderville First Nations. Me and my brothers thought the house was so cool. It even had maid stairs beside the kitchen that went upstairs to a small bedroom that was separated from the others upstairs. So everything was good for a while. We loved it there compared to the busy city. Me and my brothers had more freedom to be able to just go outside without the fear of strangers or anything like that. So one weekend my parents had a party. My friend came over with her parents, and we were playing in my room. All of a sudden, the room went cold. Not freezing, but definitely a big temperature difference. We closed the door and felt the heat coming in the bottom of the door from the hallway. Then we went in the hallway and felt the cold air coming out of my room. We thought it was a bit weird, but we were young and we thought nothing of it. A bit after that, a month or something later, I heard singing in my room when I was laying in bed trying to sleep. I got up scared and told my mum. She came in and didn't hear anything and told me to go back to bed. This literally went on way too often for years. Remember, this started when I was probably ten years old. Well, fast forward to me being in high school. I get off the bus one day and my mum was sitting outside, in the cold, without a jacket and with no shoes on. She told me she heard the singing, and it scared her so much she didn't want to be in there. The singing never happened during the day as far as I know, so we went in the house, it was quiet, and I told my mum I'd gotten used to it by now and it's clearly not a bad thing. So that was that. My mum laughed, called me nuts, and no other conversation happened. One night, me and my brothers and my dad were watching TV. It was dark out, but I'm not sure what time it was. Our dog, Sheba, a now adult German Shepherd, started barking at the door. My brother got up and told my dad he had to come to the door. So, being curious, I went to the door with my dad, and there was an orb hovering on the porch, right in front of the door, like it was about to come inside. My dad opened the screen door to let the dog go out, and the orb went across the driveway, up the grass hill, hovered, then up the next grass hill, and hovered, and then just shot up into the air, in the blink of an eye. It was the craziest thing I've seen in my life. Some other stuff happened in the house, but my parents never really told us about it, and I haven't really asked them as an adult, which I should make a point to do. Maybe I'll voice my parents sharing their experience and send it in to Wintag. That would be great, by the way. Please do. They met this guy who they became friends with, and he was telling them how many people had died in the house. All 
self-inflicted deaths. Someone had shot themselves in the driveway. Someone hung themselves off the balcony. And someone hung themselves in the attic. Now, I've never found any history on the house, so this is all just hearsay. All I know is what I've experienced. My parents bought a house on Rice Lake and we moved. Weirdly enough, I have zero memory of packing or moving from the house. Now, considering it was a big six-bedroom house and I don't remember it, that's rather strange. After that, I always had dreams of that house. Very weird dreams. Always of a woman at the top of the stairs wanting me to go upstairs. But every time I got to the top of the stairs, I would wake up. I feel I have a strong connection to that house. Recently, about a year ago, 2023, my dad's friend moved into that house. So I asked if I could go and visit. As soon as I walked in, I started crying my eyes out. I just couldn't control it. Oh, also, because it was native land, me and my brothers would always find arrowheads on the forest and by the river that ran through the yard. I live pretty close to the house, about 20 minutes away, so I'm going to take a picture of the house and send it in. Anywho, I'll end this here. Take care, Selena. Well, thank you, Selena. That is terrifying. And I think we can all agree, the bride has just shit herself. Pardon the French. But that was a terrifying tale. And it resonates with me because the story of bringing a dog over and trying to get it to go into a room and it refusing and then running away, that's exactly a story my mum told about um, a German shepherd, funny enough, when she was babysitting, I think it was her nieces and nephews. She called her uncle because there was a rocking chair that started moving in the room. And he came over with a big, big German shepherd. And he, the German shepherd wouldn't go in the room. And it was a different era back then. So he picked up the dog and threw it in the room, as you don't. And the dog yelped like it had been kicked, ran down the stairs and the front door was open and just ran out of the house. And it was found about five miles away. Like, like it didn't stop running is the point. Um, the poor little sod. So, yeah, uh, thank you very much, Selena. What an amazing story. And I wonder what your connection is to that house. Hmm. Anyway, shall we see what Becca's been up to? I think we shall. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for Paranormal Reddit Corner with Becca. Okay, so here we are on the new old, new old, new old handheld recorder, which much, which much, 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 which must mean one thing I have with me in my presence. The owner of the Turret of Terror, the one and only... Woman of... I was going to call you a wench then. Were you? Yeah. The woman of witchiness. What were you going to say? Woman of wenchness? Yeah. Which or wench really, of witchiness? Don't know. The <laughs> witchy wench. Oh, dear. Becca. Hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. Did you just mock me? Yeah, a bit. Why? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. How was um your trip to the Middle East? Yeah, it was fine. Thank you. Did you see any gin? I said not. Did you see any gin spirits? I did not. Both. That could still be the same question. Mm -hmm. Depends on how you take the word gin. Anyway, other than that, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Did you miss the cat? Of course. Did you miss me? Yes. Ah, Big R's all round the room. Well, obviously, we're not here to be sentimental or to be ah. We're here to be ooh. <laughs> and, and, <gasps> and ah. And ah. And all other noises of both surprise and or terror. And there is a specific story that I've picked out. I say picked out, I mean I've read the headline. It's the newest story under the subreddit r slash ghosts. And um, its title alone was what drew me in. Right. As always, really. Well, of course, yeah. 
My grandfather is haunting the family. Um, sorry, what are you doing? Reading the title, Julian. Why? Oh, sorry, that's your job, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Okay. Well, allow me to hand you over this, which is called a phone, which you got a new phone yesterday, didn't you? I did, yeah. Big news in our house, isn't it? It is big news, because how old was your old phone? 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. And Becca was surprised when the man in the shop couldn't transfer over all her stuff. Yeah, I was, because I told the first guy that it was 11 years old, and I was worried about transferring things, and he was like, oh, it's all right, we'll be able to do that for you. And then when they couldn't, I was very upset. Yeah. It like, got there in the end, but it was a nuisance. Like I said to you, though, you've walked in with the Rosetta Stone and said, put that on an iPhone for me. I have not walked in with the Rosetta It's the same phone. It's just um, a new, a much newer version. Much newer version. Yeah. He, um, he went to, he tried to take the case off it at one point to get the SIM out. And like it was welded on by time. Kind of yeah, literally. He was like, he's struggling to get the case off. And he went, God, that's a sturdy case. I said, well, it's done its job, hasn't it? You know, it's kept that phone going for 11 years. It never got cracks or anything, that phone. So no, the case no, was, no. And God knows I dropped it enough. So yeah, that case was a good case. Yeah. Becca, by hook or crook, in the deals with that phone some 12 years ago, managed to get this guy um, some booking discount on a Bruno Mars ticket for when she used to work at the arena. And we decided to Google when Bruno Mars played at the arena, when she'd done this deal. And it was 2012. No, 2014. Was it 2014? Yeah, but the conversation took place in 2013. Because, oh, because they want to say a year in advance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, so as long as that's how I finally got this new... I mean, you've been saying... For a good six years, I think you need a yeah. new phone. You need a new yeah. phone, um, and I finally got one. It was, it was, you know, it was getting to the point in fairness. Even I had to admit it was time. Um, and yesterday I was like, "Oh, I was going to do it, but you know, now we've got things on." And you were like, "No, no, we don't. We've got I plenty of time." Walked you to the, to the <laughs> shop, pushed and made, you in, made sure I went in. Yeah, because we went for breakfast before, and then we sat having breakfast. And Becca's phone, her old phone, done something I've never seen any phone do. It just started. Jumping from screen to screen and flashing and flashing and then it died. You've been a bit And I went, what was that? And you went, what? And I went, your phone's just had a stroke. And you went, no, no, it's just low on battery. I went, you need a new phone today. And I got a new phone. And you got a new even phone. At, yeah, even I had to admit at that point. Because it got to a point where sometimes, it did it the other day annoyingly. I think I was waiting for an Uber and it, it did it then. But it, even if it had like say seventy percent battery, if it feels overloaded, it would just shut down. But then it wouldn't turn back on again, or rather it would, but it turn itself straight off unless it was on charge. Even when it had the battery, it would say like it had zero battery and die. So it was. And how long was it doing that for? No, it's only done it two or three times in the past, but it has done it. Jesus wept. Mm. Anyway. Anyway. Anyway, welcome to Reddit Corner with Becca. Thank you for welcoming for welcoming welcoming them. Welcoming them? Welcoming. Welcoming us to your corner. You're welcome. The title of this story is My Grandfather is Haunting the Family that Bought the Ranch He Worked On. My Family is Distraught. Dun, dun, dun. Big title. Interesting. So Lots to build up to. Why would their family be distraught? Let's see. Let's see. This is a story that I thought I'd never need to tell or get help with. Can someone please help me make sense of this? I have no supernatural experience. Okay, so, so this they, is literally well, this a quite well. to be. Mm-hmm. My grandfather was an immigrant from Germany to the US. He served in World War II as a German translator for the US. He then bought a ranch in Texas and raised his family in the city in Austin. I don't know how they had the money to buy two properties. He passed away from dementia in 2018 and we sold the ranch in 2021. Operation Paperclip. Okay. The mother of the family that bought the ranch reached out to my cousin on Facebook after finding the surname somehow and said her and her kids are seeing a man described in dress like my grandpa walking around. She never knew my grandpa, much less any of my family. We had no idea who got the land after selling. She also said they're seeing angels with black wings flying around the pasture where we spread his ashes. Fuck that. Operation Paperclip. What's Operation Paperclip? Why do you keep saying this? Operation Paperclip was a genuine thing where 
um, top Nazi scientists at England and America took part in Operation Paperclip to get them before Russia got them. I actually thought that the first time you burst out with Operation Paperclip, it took me a second, but I thought I'll let it go because I thought you were suggesting when it said he had the money to buy two properties, I thought you meant, you know those um, ridiculous things you keep seeing online about swapping a paperclip from paperclip to house? Oh, yeah. Like, I have a paperclip, (laughs) I'm going to swap it for a pen. I have a pen, I'm going to swap it for a bike. I have a bike, I'm going to swap it for a car. Yeah, and they build up to a house. Yeah, Yeah, that's fucking ridiculous. Didn't you have a... uh, You knew someone who was doing that, didn't you? How far did she get? Well, I I don't know. I don't even know who you're talking about. Who was doing it? I don't know, someone you know. Presumably someone from your last place of work, because that's where you know everyone. There's only one person I can imagine who would try and do that, and they didn't do it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, anyway, back to the story. So where we left the story was, she she also said they're seeing angels with black wings flying around the pasture, which spreads ashes. I keep finding negative things about angels with black wings online. Then we find out more. Here is another message that was sent to my cousin from the mother. Oh, this is copied and pasted. Ooh. We moved in here only eight weeks ago, and as a woman of faith, it's been a series of strange, frightening things that I certainly wouldn't usually tell a stranger. Odd smells, everything breaking, house almost catching fire, illness, strange dreams, seeing strange things, constant anxiety, things that cannot be explained. My children and myself are frightened. I've contacted a local pastor, but he didn't take me seriously. Well, not, not nice. That's not what a pastor's meant to do. I know. Whoa! Could... Slam the door. Could anyone help me make sense of this? I loved that ranch growing up. I was never scared there. However, looking back, I've always had scary dreams about that place growing up. I'm struggling a lot with it personally. He seemed to be a great man in everyone's life. Do we need to go there and find him? We really don't know if there's anything to do, but it makes our stomachs turn considering the events that the family there is going through. Anything helps. If we bought a house in 2021 and someone had died three years earlier and recently, I don't know, they moved in there eight weeks ago. I don't know, I just can't see us going back about someone who died six years ago, contacting a family. No. And moaning about it, you know what I mean? I I don't know, I just can't see that chain of events happening. We know by first name the person that this house was bought from. Hmm. And if weird things started happening in this house... I really think they do. But if weird things started happening in this house, so much so that we couldn't handle it, I still wouldn't get in touch with him. Yeah, no, that's all. And, you know, this... I don't... Obviously, there's a bit of a time, like, we're missing kind of a key time because this family sold the ranch in 2021 Mm. and this family has only just moved in by all accounts. So, you know, there's a bit of a... A gap yeah, there in gap, time. Yeah, there's a gap, a fair gap. Three years, yeah. So I what mean, happens Angels with Black Wings, though, that's... It sounds like a death metal song. Yeah. But it doesn't sound like it's a... If I said to you, the where my granddad's ashes are buried, it, there are often sighted angels with black wings. Mm. That's not a positive. No. Let's be honest. What, what are the comments? So someone says, The interesting part is that you had strange sensations when growing up there prior to your grandfather passing. That's what I said. This could mean it's not your grandfather, but another entity. Maybe the ground was haunted or processed. They must have been possessed prior. Um, someone else replies, And the grandfather is probably there trying to protect them. Someone says, Or trying to run them off his property. Um, could be, Need a lot more information on the background and current situation to fully understand it. Someone else says, I would get a medium. We had a ghost situation in our 1896 Victorian. I love that. We had a ghost situation. <laughs> Brilliant. I'd love to. Maybe we've got a bit of a ghost situation yeah. going on. Kids are divorced. No, I'll just leave that situation. We brought in a medium. It turned out to be the maid who broke her neck and died on the servant's staircase in the early 1900s. She didn't know she was dead. She was angry she had no funeral. So we held a funeral for her and buried a lace cloth in her honour near a tree in the backyard. She crossed over and things felt a lot lighter in the house. She still comes to visit, though. Right, so hold on. Was she in nice spirit until the medium turned up and said, you're dead, then she got angry because she had no funeral? Because they can't say she was angry and throwing things around because she had no funeral. Turns out she didn't know she was dead. dead. Well, I don't don't know. We just know it was a ghost situation. 
Go situation. <laughs> Um, someone else says you need to find a paranormal group in your area that employs a good physical medium. Psychic, psychical. Is that what they mean? Medium. Psychical medium. What's a psychical? Psychical. As in, like, there are mediums who like can do alleged. Um, what's it called? Uh, I can't think of the word. It's escaping me. But doing reading, doing readings by touch. Okay. Right. Not chiromancy because. That's no. something else altogether. Mm. But it, it's yeah. a man mm. Okay. Let me put it that way. Um, this is not a do-it-yourself kind of problem. If you don't look carefully here, you might, might, might be even sorrier and scarier than you are now. Do not sage, light candles, whistle at night, try to communicate in any way with it. Do not whistle at <laughs> night. <laughs> oh, shit. You don't know what you're dealing with here. It could be a case where a different family comes in and starts to remodel and you didn't like it. Or it could be something attached to someone in the family. No Ouija boards ever. Good luck. Make sure and find a real psychical medium. Um, and the, the person who posted the story has uh, replied to that and said, this is honestly solid advice. I didn't think of this. My sister mentioned going out there and we thought about reaching back out to the mother and asking if we could out, go out there. But if there is something deeper beyond our knowledge, I don't want anyone in my family to be stuck with something following them around. Oh, we've got a personal recommendation. Oh, I said like, you want to try Brenda from 3 4 Rose Street? Literally. Shut up. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I feel like this is vague enough. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Can we say this? It's on Reddit. They put it on Reddit. Yeah, okay. I mean, if there's anything you feel that might be too personal, you can bleep it. Okay, I'll bleep a middle bit. So this says, reach out to Alexis at beep in Austin. Like, Austin's really? massive, yeah. But at, sort of like there's a specific thing in the middle. And there's an address or a phone yeah. number. Oh, hang on. So, okay, right, okay. Scratch, scratch that. Reach out to Alexis at City Alchemist in Austin. And the reason that's okay to say is, someone says, is that Alexis from the Night Owl podcast? Love him. Listen to that podcast, if so, um, so to the poster. Listen to that podcast, if so, to help make your decision. Is it Texas-based and not dependent on shock value ghost hunting? The producer and mediums involved appear to be acting in good faith. Someone else has said second in this, reach out to him. So he must be a podcaster who actually does investigations. No. Presumably. Interesting. Yeah. A psychic podcaster. Well, either. Maybe he might not be psychic, but that maybe someone on the team is, presumably. Because if they've said the producer and mediums involved appear to be acting in good faith, so it must be a team. Ooh. So that's interesting. Um, also, that's quite a few comments. There. Oh, someone else, someone else has a similar thing. Google the Night Out podcast and write out this story in the contact us section or call the phone number and leave a message. They're Austin based and have been able to help others in the area who are dealing with haunted activity. They're fantastic at identifying the root cause of the hauntings, which then lets them choose the right response for each situation. Um, Oh, you could also contact Alexis at City Alchemist, a shop in Austin. He knows a lot about this stuff and is part of the Night Owl team too. Okay. So this person's part of the team. So now we're getting somewhere. Um, okay, excellent. Someone says, lots of wild theories. Just because he was German during World War II doesn't mean the guy's Hitler. Yeah, Kev. Yeah. Take that, Kev, and a um, pound a week and an extra two pound. Um, they say, OP, if it is anything, don't assume it's your grandfather. Homesteads and ranches can be weird places with lots and lots of history. Very fair point. Very fair point. Um, whether ghosts are real or not, I refuse to accept the idea that they're relatives or even human. I would always assume that it's some sort of demonic impersonator. Interesting. Many religions will say the same thing, which is why you might come up against a brick wall contacting holy people and saying it's your grandfather. Maybe approach them from a different angle on behalf of the new owners. Well, I'd say it's a demon. Well, no, so that's an interesting point. So this person basically doesn't that believes that the concept of ghosts is not that they're ever human or actual relatives. Yeah. It's that it's a demonic impersonator. Well, that, that, that's the, the common thing. That's the entire thing with Ouija boards. It's never the dead. Well, that's the first time I've heard that as a ghost theory. I yeah, think for all ghosts. that's interesting. So, yeah. Um... Someone's replied to that saying, people forget that Nazis were a political party that Germans had to join to be classed as a Nazi. And if you were outside Germany but were a fan of Hitler, you'd be a Nazi sympathiser. My great-uncle was a German soldier during World War II and it's not like I, he had any choice in the matter. 
He wasn't politically a Nazi, but he had to join the army during World War Two, just like lots of young men in other countries. Very true. Okay. Um, I live in my grandparents' home on the land he farmed. My grandma died in the house. I know she's here. I know she talks to my daughter. Not super helpful for the yep. person who posted, but okay. It that. It's you, not yeah. basically saying, I'm in your boat too. And don't worry, sometimes it's a bit splashy, but we get about. Yeah. And we are, after all, in a boat. Uh-huh. So someone said, your grandfather is very... Oh, this person knows, apparently, all about it. Your grandfather is very angry. You folks need to go there and speak to him and tell him that you had to sell the property. And please let the family there alone. Tell him he needs to move on. He might be stuck there or reluctant to move on. Finding a medium to communicate with him would help. Other than that, I know a removal technique I use to get a male ghost from my home. It's free. Let me know if you want me to explain it to you. I feel like we plan to that. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> I want to know because, um, I, I mean, there's a certain sort of person comes into my head when I hear the phrase like, let them alone. Mm. Not leave. Let them alone. Is that not just a US style? Phrasing. I think it is, but from a certain Like, get area. off of me. Like what? Like, get off of me. I say get off of me. In the UK, we would say get off me. No, in the I, US, say, I say get off of me. Well, that you've picked it up from the US. Get off of me! Wait, oh, no, it's just it right there. Let me pretend I'm being attacked. Get off! Oh, no, I don't, I don't. I just say get off. I know. Um, so the, per- the poster has replied to this, to their, that comment about someone saying your grandfather's very angry. And they've said, during a family conversation tonight, we did suggest that maybe he's mad we had to sell it. I love that place more than any of us. I inherited a lot of his shirts and never feel anything supernatural when I wear them. Maybe perhaps he's just mad at the circumstance. Um, Yeah, and the person said, this is my opinion. It didn't stay in the family and he doesn't know slash like the new owners. Um, Fair enough. Oh, no, someone else has said, not your grandpa. He's not worrying about his old house. Stay out of it. Demons pretend to be folks who have passed. It's never good to get involved. That's well, the same thing twice. Same. same yeah, is that the same twice. person? No, no, it's the same thing. No, it's the same theory, but slightly different. Okay. Well, I think uh, we'll leave it there on okay. the, you know, our second demon suggestion of the day. Yeah. Um, you can be a bit too. You can get a bit too over demon. You know. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. But thank you, as ever, Becca, for allowing us into your turret of terror and delivering us Becca's Reddit corner. You are welcome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Tatty, bye. Bye. Oh, oh, wait. Thank you for visiting Reddit corner with Becca. Ah. Bye. You haven't done that in about two months. I have. Okay. It's not been two months since the last did a Reddit corner. I think it has. I don't think it has. I feel like it's been about three weeks. Well, it feels <laughs> like two months. Oh. Anyway, tatty bye. Bye bye.